And welcome back. Home buyer mortgage demand decreased to a three month low last week as average mortgage rates reach nearly a seven month high. However, though, that's not the full story, though, because when looking at pre pandemic levels, home buyer mortgage demand is on par with the lowest levels going back to December of 2014. I have a lot to share in today's video, including some early indications of home buying demand to give us an idea of which direction our US housing market is headed. So of course, I have a lot to share. Let's go ahead and dive right in. I do not want to waste your time here. But again, thank you so much for joining me in today's video. So this is based on a report from the NBA uh, just announced today, which is May 31st. It says here, um, applications decreased by 3.7% compared to one week ago. And this report here covers the week ended May 26th before the Memorial Day holiday here. So of course, applications includes applications for refis, but also for home loans to buy houses as well. So the refi index decreased by 7% from last week. And of course, it was down by 45% from the same week one year ago. Of course, this makes sense because rates are so much higher compared to uh, one year ago, approximately two percentage points, uh, but more on that here in just a little bit. Also, the uh, seasonally adjusted purchase index, which of course is a measure of people submitting applications to buy houses, decreased 3% from one week ago and was down 31% from one year ago. What they do not mention in this report though, which I found based on my own analysis, is their index or their purchase index is at uh, 154.4. As you can see right there, uh, the lowest level is going back to approximately December of 2014. I should say the lowest pre-COVID levels going back to December 2014. In addition, when I zoom in over the past one year, um, applications for home loans have now decreased for three consecutive months. And going back to the MBA's report here, according to uh, Mike uh, Frantoni, who is the MBA's senior vice president and chief economist, he stated the following, inflation is still running too high and recent economic data is beginning to convince investors that the Federal Reserve will not be cutting rates anytime soon. So if you guys are curious about the street's expectations of future rate hikes and also future rate decreases, uh, a really good a tool that I like looking at is the uh, CME Fed Watch tool. If you Google that, it takes you to this website right here. So the next meeting by the Fed is in 14 days uh, from uh, today, which is on May 31st. So the next meeting is scheduled for June 14th. So the current rate right now, this is the federal funds rate, which is controlled by the Fed, is at 5.25% in the upper range. So by a 77.2% probability, uh, the street is forecasting for the Fed to pause any rate hikes in their next meeting. Look at July though, because in the end of July, July 26, the street is forecasting by a 47.4% probability that the Fed is gonna increase rates by 25 basis points. Let's look at November 1st though. November 1st this year, the uh, forecast here is a 38% probability that the Fed's gonna decrease rates by 25 basis points to 5.25%. Then on December 13th, the last meeting this year, uh, they're also forecasting that the Fed is gonna decrease rates once again to 5%. So big picture here, there's this expectation right now that the Fed's gonna raise rates in their meeting in July and then decrease them in November. Uh, therefore, I would expect that average 30 or fixed rate mortgages is likely to remain elevated because we're not gonna see any decreases in the federal funds rate anytime soon. Also, according to uh, the uh, senior vice president and chief economist at the NBA again, he says mortgage rates for conforming balance 30-year loans were being quoted above 7% last week. And the weekly average last week was at 6.9%, the highest level since November last year. In fact, the highest levels going back to early November uh, last year. One thing I do wanna mention though, is that rates have been decreasing over the past two days in a row. So according to the um, Mortgage News Daily, for a 30-year fix for people with exceptional credit, it's at 6.91%. 
FHA and VA is around 6.59%. So in fact, when looking at the past two days, rates for 30-year fix had decreased by about 23 basis points, uh, going down from 7.14%. And by the way, that was the highest level since early November last year. Now they have decreased to 6.91%. Now having said that, we're still up by 1.55 percentage points compared to 12 months ago when average rates were at 5.36 percent. Something you guys should be aware of though is that when looking at average rates according to the Mortgage News Daily, uh, this is actually different than other sources as well though. So according to Investopedia.com, the average 30-year fixed rate is at 7.37 percent today. Also, going back to the MBA's report here, it says application volumes for purchases as well as refis decreased last week due to these higher rates. Go figure, of course, right? Um, while refinance demand is almost entirely driven by the level of rates, uh, purchase volume continues to be constrained by the lack of houses hitting the market. So I would imagine we're seeing this decrease of applications because, of course, uh, we have these very high uh, mortgage rates, of course, but also because we have a lack of houses for sale, historically speaking. And I actually have an update for you guys regarding that. So here's altosresearch.com. So for the week ended uh, May uh, 26, there's approximately 433,000 houses for sale. One year ago, there was 357,000. That's an increase of about 21% year over year. And keep in mind though, back in 2021, as well as 2022, we had very, very low uh, inventory levels, a low amount of houses for sale overall. So when looking at levels right now at 433,000, look at pre-pandemic levels. Going back to May 31st, 2019, there was 941,000 houses for sale. That's a decrease of 54%. So even though we have approximately 21% more houses for sale compared to the past couple of years, we still have approximately 54% fewer houses for sale compared to pre-COVID levels. Now here's something that's new though that I wanna share in today's video though, because when looking at 2019, obviously we saw a, a surge of the number of houses for sale. Uh, the trough right here was more or less in March 1st, when there's approximately 818,000 houses for sale and then increased to 941,000, giant increase, which is a seasonal uptick uh, in housing inventory. Uh, this year, entirely different because inventory levels have been more or less flat ever since uh, the beginning of March this year. Now, here's the new trend though. So when I zoom in over the past one year, have a look at this. See, inventory levels um, have been decreasing like they do each and every year uh, after the winter months. We should be seeing this uptick of inventory. Again, we have not been seeing that, but look at this though. For the past two weeks, inventory levels have been increasing, albeit at a small level, but increasing nonetheless. Going from 420,000 uh, two weeks ago, now it's 433,000. So of course, that's not a, a significant increase, but it is an increase over the past two weeks. And of course, something uh, worth following and reporting on the channel in the weeks and months ahead. Uh, of course, the reason why we're not seeing a, enough houses for sale is because we're seeing a decrease of new listings. So according to Redfin, for the previous four weeks, uh, that was a 24.1% decrease in the number of new listings compared to 2022 at this time. So over the previous four weeks, there was approximately 92,000 new listings, whereas back in 2022 this time, there's approximately 121,000. This means over the past one month, we're missing approximately 30,000 new listings compared to 2022. And that of course is one reason why we're seeing a lack of houses for sale, especially compared to uh, pre-COVID levels. So that's why I wanna share regarding uh, the MBA's report, but I also wanna share some more early indications of home buying demand and some uh, big changes here as well. This is the number of real estate showings across North America, according to showingtime.com. So the orange line right here is 2023. <clears throat> the line above there is 2021. And the line below in dark blue is from 2022. So for the week ended May 29th, 
uh, this year, there was a 2.2% increase in the number of real estate showings compared to the first week this year. Whereas last year at this time, it was a, uh, what was it, a 6.2% decrease compared to the first week of 2022. So as you can see, back in 2021 as well, we saw a decrease in the number of real estate showings. This is entirely normal because uh, the, this is data through May 29th, which encompasses the Memorial Holiday Weekend. Uh, so of course, a lot of people are traveling and of course not looking at houses during the holiday weekend. So there's that, but also this as well, because um, ever since really mid-April, we've been seeing more real estate showings compared to last year. Uh, but this has not translated into more contracts being signed between buyers and sellers, like I've been mentioning on the channel for quite some time. According to Redfin, pending home sales, which is a measure of contracts being signed between buyers and sellers of existing houses, decreased by 17.4% compared to the same week in 2022. Also, pending home sales have been below 2022's levels all year. So even though there's more real estate showings compared to last year, that has not translated into more home sales uh, nationwide. Uh, here's another trend we're seeing as well, because the number of people searching for homes for sale on Google has been decreasing. Uh, the index right now is at 83. One year ago, it was at 92. This means the interest over time over the past 12 months is down by 12%. In other words, more or less a 12% decrease in the number of people searching for homes for sale on Google. So to summarize today's video, my biggest takeaway is this huge decrease in the number of people submitting loan applications to buy houses, the lowest pre-COVID levels going back to late December of 2014, a huge decrease in home buying demand. And also the third consecutive uh, week in which applications have been decreasing as well. And that's likely due to the fact we have this lack of houses for sale. But in my personal opinion, this right here, because rates are very, very high at 6.91%, especially compared to 2020 and 2021 when rates were averaging at 3%. But what's your biggest takeaway? Please leave me a comment below. I appreciate you guys uh, for watching today's video and of course for, for supporting my YouTube channel. Hope you guys have an awesome day. I look forward to seeing you on the next video.